Hello, my friends. This is Heather. This is another episode of the Back to Me podcast. Today, I am talking with Elizabeth Phillips. We're talking about energy. We're talking about Reiki. We're talking about meditation. And we're talking about enlightenment. Surprisingly enough, have a listen. Let me know what you think. Take care, and I will see you soon. Hello, my friends. I hope you're having a fabulous day. The weather's getting warmer and summer is coming and I'm so excited. And I want to invite you to come and join me in my latest free masterclass. And I do these every month. This was something new and exciting. And I'm just really excited to present this to you. And it's called, Are You Ready to Step Into Your Best Life? So are you ready to step into your best life? this is the question. And you might think, well, I don't know if I want to be happy or if I want to be healthy or if I want to feel better. And if you're not ready, that's okay. That's okay. But if you are ready, scroll down into the show notes and you will see a link to the upcoming masterclass. It's going to be on June the 28th. And I hope to see you there. And I hope you have a fabulous day, my friend. Take care. See you soon. Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hello, my friend. How are you? I hope you're having a day. And if you read, listened to last week's podcast, you'll know why I said you're having a day. But, you know, we're all going to have a day. So we'll do whatever we can to make it as good as we can. And today, my day is going to be awesome because I am talking to Elizabeth Phillips and we are talking energy and Reiki and emotions and feeling good. Right? Right, yeah. Elizabeth? <laughs> Right, Elizabeth? She says questioningly. Maybe. It's all about how we feel. It's all yeah. about how we feel. And how are you today? Thank you so much for joining oh, thanks us. Thanks for asking. Yeah, we're going to have a fabulous day. I'm feeling really good. It's um, It's been a great day. I'm excited to be here. So thank you. Good. Thank, thank you. you for asking. Absolutely. And thanks uh, for having me. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> By the way, everybody, Elizabeth has a podcast called Heal. And is there a tagline with it? Yep. It's conversations to guide you toward personal growth and overall well-being. That's a mouthful. I know. <laughs> and the first, I'm gonna... few times, the first few times I recorded the intro, which I record every for every episode, I'd have to read it because I'm like, what, what did I say it was again? <laughs> <laughs> so for everybody listening, I'm going to include the link in the show notes, but I was on Elizabeth's podcast. And we had so much fun. We had a great time. Yeah. And that was all about me. But today was all about, today is all about you. Well, it's about both of us today. I don't True. Care. Okay. Yeah. That's I groovy. Mind. I can share. All right. But so the first thing I was super curious about with people is how did you get into this thing that you're doing? And you can yeah. tell people what you're doing at the same time. Yikes, that's a really good question. You yeah. Know, I'm long-winded, so you just stop me whenever you need to, Heather. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. I'm ready. <sighs> I, um, I, am, I was a teacher for 16 years in a public school. I taught kindergarten for most of those years, special education for some of those years, and first grade one of those years. And um, <laughs> only one. That was enough. <laughs> that was funny. when you left. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, and, and I still consider myself a teacher. However, back in 2010 or 11, a friend introduced me to meditation. And um, I didn't start practicing meditation until later. However, I was like, whoa, that's kind of neat. I immediately felt weird and different after a meditation. And this, was, this wasn't even a relaxing focus on your breath kind of meditation. This was visual, visualizing. And this meditation, she said, what do you see when you close your eyes, you know, try to empty your mind and what are, do you see any images or anything? And the things that I saw, she said, well, pay attention in the next couple of days and they may show up. And they did. And I was like, that is the 
that was bizarre. So that, that was my introduction. And then shortly after that, I came, I was away and visited her. She was in California. She lived in Carlsbad. Um, so the first time I ever meditated by myself was on Carlsbad State Beach, um, which was beautiful. So anyways, right. I think the energy there is amazing. Um, then about a year after that, I started uh, receiving Reiki, which is healing energy. And I know you know all about that. Mm -hmm. However, I started going to a practitioner once a month. And then I started to um, take her classes to be attuned and certified to practice as well as teach Reiki. Um, and at the same time as I was going through those classes, I went through a teacher meditation class. So I learned um, more about meditation, more about mindful meditation and um, meditate daily and receiving Reiki monthly. So throughout that phase, it was probably 2000 and I don't know, 14? Time, time has become a weird, elastic, strange, I don't even thing. know. I have no idea how old I am. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it was around that time. And I was doing both of those things at the same time. So I was receiving, you know, healing energy every month. I would religiously go to those, my appointments. Right. And I was meditating every day. And I found a huge benefit for myself. Um and just wanted to share it with others. So that's pretty much what I do now. <laughs> that's what happens with teacher people, right? So I'm... I can't help it. Yeah. I know. I, we were talking about that when we first met that, you know, I have that kind of teacher gene yeah. where as soon as I learn something I think is pretty groovy, yeah. I just want to teach... I don't just like, this is so exciting. I've got to teach you how to do this. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the benefits, uh, maybe people didn't... I don't know if anyone on the outside noticed how much I had changed, but I certainly had on the inside. And that's really hard to explain. Other than I know I was a little bit more at peace, I was less reactive. I was understanding why I would perhaps respond to things in a certain way, like going way back and um, into my childhood and my experiences and without a therapist. It was crazy. It was crazy. Right. Like all of this, of course, I did get a therapist eventually, but we're friends now. Um, <laughs> and I, I just absolutely love meditating every day. My mind knows exactly what's happening. When I close my eyes and just take a deep breath, it's like, oh, yeah, this I know it's happening. Right. Um, and if I happen to miss a session, uh, I notice it. I, I almost immediately can feel it in my muscles um, through tension. It's crazy. It's crazy. It so. is. Once you get used to like, a lot of people will say to me, oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't meditate. I can't. No, I can't. Hard. I can't. It's not but easy. It's not. We never said it was easy. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> but when it's not easy, it's worth it. Things it that is. are hard sometimes are worth it. And I, it's, I compare it sometimes to going to the gym, right? It's oh, like. Yes. So yes. when you first start going to the gym, you're like, oh, God. And, you know, you're sore and you don't want to go, but you go because you know it's good for you because you can see the external evidence of what's helping you, even though it's helping you internally as well. But meditation, like you said, maybe no one noticed. They probably did, but didn't really know that they noticed. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Or they were too kind to be like, hey, how come you're not such a, a jerk now? <laughs> Right. Wow. You she's so really calm. Right. <laughs> like, well, what, what did I look like before? Although I, you know, I knew it. I, yeah. I was, yeah. I knew it. But it's more the, the, the meditation is the in, inside change of like, yeah, living inside your body. And it is like, you have to exercise that muscle as well. Yeah. And I've meditated for a long time. Yeah. Like, well, I've done yoga since I've done yoga for what year is it? for like 20 Don't ask me <laughs> i think i've done yoga for this is going to be scary for me to say out loud like 23 years yeah i i you know i know a lot of people who have practiced things like yoga meditation and reiki for around that time and it's right. just it's, i wish i had come to it sooner in my lifetime but you know we come to things when we're supposed to and i when say that ready. about reiki all the time too like reiki comes to you when you need it it comes yeah. to you when it's supposed to 
Um, and it was it was interesting because I actually started meditating before I started doing yoga. I tried yeah. out meditation because I was a stress case. And um, yeah, so meditation, like once you exercise that muscle, it's actually not hard, like you said, to sit down every day and do whatever you can do. Like I usually do 20 minutes, but sometimes I do more and sometimes I do less. Yeah. And it was so interesting because I was taking a... Um, uh, Art, I was going to art school as an adult, and this was probably eight or nine years ago. I don't know. Time is elastic. And on Wednesday mornings, I had a meeting, so I didn't have time. Usually, I meditate in the morning, so I didn't have time in the mornings to meditate before I went to class. And this one guy that I used to sit with, he, would, he wouldn't sit with me on Wednesday mornings because he said, on Wednesday mornings, you're kind of bitchy. <laughs> Oh, wow. You noticed. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know what? I think really? when talking about the outside and people noticing, I really do think that they wouldn't have because for ye for my whole life, I've always had this, you know, you might be able to read what I'm thinking in my face a little bit, but I really kept a lot in. Um, so I felt it in like turbulence right. inside, thoughts racing, anxiety, um, everything, like just constant, constant. So when I was able to find a way to slow down a little bit um, and focus on something else other than nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, then, then I feel more in control of the inside. And I think that was really the difference. More, and you get to I'm... enjoy being on your inside, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot at of least, people are always very looking out. Be very aware of what's happening in there. Right. I mean, that's the first step. So if you're a very, if you are aware of what's happening in there, then you are able to be like, okay, I notice you, I see you in there. Let's shift you over here and focus on something else. Right. So, I mean, that's, I think the biggest, I always say awareness is the first step. And I think that's what I mean by that. I mean, a lot I say that, that too. You know what I mean? Like I, being aware that you have many thoughts and then being aware that of those thoughts, like hearing them instead of just letting them fly through your head without any awareness right, <laughs> is really important. And if you can't sit and meditate yet, becoming more aware of the thoughts that you're having is a great first step before you sit down. And I wonder sometimes if people have come to it with like, a, I need to fill in the blank. This meditation, I have to be able to clear my mind like a cool pool of no that doesn't actually happen to anybody who's maybe alive <laughs> maybe, maybe the dalai lama i always say probably no. the dalai lama <laughs> but isn't that why they practice to be right. able to i mean it's a practice it's a practice yeah. my new word my new favorite words and i've adopted them in the past few months is it's a practice and i use that for almost everything like i practice sitting quietly and focusing on my breath or on an affirmation or on I don't know what my body feels like. I practice that. Do That means when I'm sitting there one day and my thoughts are racing and I just can't focus, I'm still practicing. Still practicing. You're practicing becoming more aware, period. Yeah. yeah I did. Heaven. Something that I found I did a while ago was uh, someone that I interviewed. She She does a whole bunch of things too. She had on, do you use the Insight Timer? I'm on Insight Timer as a teacher. I only have a handful of meditations, but yes, I every time I talk to someone about meditation and they should be paying me at this point, I recommend Insight Timer because it's probably the best app that I've used. It is. I've used it for a long, long, long time. And um, generally, I just use the timer, but there are so much resources on there for people who don't know where to start. Even and more now. The, even they've more. added some more resources lately. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a teacher on there, Alice Langholt, who I interviewed not too long ago. And she has on there 30 days of peace. Oh, nice. And it's just like a two-minute, one or two-minute every day for 30 days of something to just sit with. So I did it just because I was super curious. And as long as I've been practicing, like I've been practicing, 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 I still had things happen from just doing something different than I I think that's do. important. Uh, right? You know, so many people are afraid of think to change and try, trying different and new things. Um, 
Or they but think they have sure. the answers. I don't know all the answers. Oh my God. Are right. You me? I know. I mean, we could sit in meditation and have one affirmation or just focus on the breath and that would be so beneficial. But what if you tried a visualization and you were like, holy cow, my mind just went somewhere else completely. Wow. Would that be nice? You know, like just try something different. Do you find that people who are visual learners are better at visualization than others? Um, well, I'm a visual learner and I haven't really been great at visualization so hmm. well i'm really like a hands-on um kinesthetic and visual learner so um but i have to tell you i, I don't know i was not good at just meditating on my breath <laughs> for a long time <laughs> but you, you didn't know? stop breathing right <laughs> oh my god so uh, i when i first started going to a class to meditate I would open my eyes, like squint my, oh, you can see me, right? <laughs> Sorry, whenever I record podcasts, I'm not on video. Well, but some I'm, of this will go to audio. So okay. the people well, who aren't, would, list, aren't watching are listening. My eyes would be closed. I'm going to try to describe this with words too. And I would just like peek one eye open a little bit and I would look around the room and be like, what's everyone doing? And then I would look <laughs> at the teacher and be like, what's he doing? Is he looking at his phone? What is he doing while he's guiding us? It was awful. Like it, I, that's how I started meditating. So if you're anything like me, you can do it. You can still do it. If that's where you start, that's okay. I always, yeah. when I talk to people about yoga, I say, if you're coming to yoga because you want the yoga butt, start there because <laughs> we got to start somewhere. We got to start where you are. I go for <laughs> right. Shavasana. So there are often times that I'll attend a class that I have here at my studio and um, I tell the teacher, <laughs> if you see me lay down, don't worry about it. And she's like, oh, no, you do what you need to do. This class is for you, whatever you need. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> laying down in Shavasana. I have an eye pillow. I have pillows under my legs. I have a blanket. And I'm just spread out like a, my arms are in a T. And I just lay there and meditate. That's And I say, you know, I did yoga today. <laughs> That's yoga. It is. It's not about asana, right? It's right. It's all the parts. It's all the parts. And for my friends who don't know what asana is, that's the postures. Um, and maybe what you need is yoga nidra. <laughs> well, I actually <laughs> I actually guide yoga nidra once a month here at my there studio. There you go. Well, yeah. Where is your studio again? I'm in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. In the United States of America. Yes. You're not um, that far away from me. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So we're south uh, between Boston and Providence, Rhode Island. Hmm. If you know where Rhode Island is. I've been to Boston. Yeah. I went yeah. to Salem. Yes. Of course. Yeah, I'm far, far away from Salem. Probably a good hour and a half. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, because my brain bounces around, is so you were getting regular treatments for yourself. Do you still do that? So one of my very good friends is also a Reiki master. Um, I don't. And teacher. Yep. She's also a Reiki master teacher. I was just trying to think if she was. And she and I will swap. Wow. Um, Reiki. Yep. Because I was like, sometimes when you like, I remember my Reiki teacher saying, you know, you can do Reiki for yourself. And I also did acupuncture for a long time. And I would give myself acupuncture. But you know, some stuff is hard to reach. <laughs> You really would give yourself acupuncture? Yes, I would wow, really give myself acupuncture. Um, but I'll tell you, if you know where the piriformis muscle is, that's a hard muscle to reach for yourself. <laughs> it's so, where is that muscle? <laughs> it's in your butt. It's in your butt. <laughs> I figured it was close to my butt. So, um, and I was talking to an acupuncturist at one point, and he said giving yourself acupuncture is kind of sometimes like trying to tickle yourself. It doesn't feel as effective. And I'm so I'm like, I like I give myself Reiki, but sometimes I think, oh, I wonder if it was if the experience of it is kind of like trying to tickle yourself or give yourself I acupuncture. Think it is. I think right? it is. Yes, it's beneficial. Of course, you're receiving the healing energy. However, if you're you're giving yourself Reiki, you're not fully relaxed. You're not you know, you're just it's different. Right. It's yeah. Different. Yeah, it's, that's true. Yep. So yeah, I definitely, we swap. Now we've been off a, a few months here and there. I definitely could benefit from having a session soon, but that's our, that's what we do. We swap. And and as a matter of fact, just two days ago, I was like, we have to make an appointment and <laughs> we didn't. Right. 
you know, there's always stuff going on in life, life, the world and everything. Yeah. I also go to a great healer. I'm not sure she'd want me to mention her name. She's very quiet. But I had a session this morning with her and she does some releasing as well um, of blockages and um, cords, like cutting cords and things like that. So I go to her as well. Well, I mean, unless she does it virtually, I don't know that people would be, or, or they're in near you, they won't be. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just, just to answer the question, do I take, do I take do you do Reiki s- from someone? Yeah, and I get, I do this as well, and it's, it's um, almost like body testing. You know oh, about okay. That? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it emotion yeah. code? It's, it's tied into that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Emotion code is a very interesting. There are so, so I, last week's podcast, I was talking about how a lot of the world seems to be more open to what's being referred to as the woo. <laughs> Where did that word come from? I don't know. Because everybody said, oh, that's too woo woo. I know. I know. I, I know that. And I'm like, I don't, I, for some reason that bo- that term bothers me and I don't oh. know why I let it bother me so much. I don't know. Cause I'm embracing the woo. Yeah. But <laughs> why wouldn't you try something new and different if it made you feel good? Yeah, absolutely. And I remember the first time I went to a naturopath, which was very new and different because, you know, if you came through the uh, Western medical and suddenly you went to a naturopath and they asked you all these questions about when was the first time you were ever sick in your whole life and you're in your 40s and you're like, I I don't know. (laughs) I'll ask my mom. Right. Because, yeah, it's like they're trying to track your whole life. And they sp- he spent two hours with me where, you know, my doctor would spend 15 minutes with me. Now, they're looking for different things, right? But if you have never experienced that, it's very foreign and very strange. And I remember him saying to me, well, we're going to do this and this and this, and you're going to feel better. But at first, you're going to feel worse. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so he called it the healing crisis. That's kind of like a spiritual awakening. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, I don't know. All right. Tell me, can I just go off? Go, for a go, go around. Yep. Do it. I have, want your theory on spiritual awakenings and how many of those can you have in a lifetime? <laughs> I in- ask infinite. because I swear I've had like several and maybe they're just times in my life where I have these major epiphanies, you know, like crap is happening and I'm just like, whoa. And then I realize something out of that crap is like okay i get it this is why this yeah. is happening i mean i've had several of those like life altering spiritual type healing if you will moments and you come out different on the other end yeah because once you know something you know it you can't yeah you're not going to go back we don't get the it's not like what was i can't remember what that program was where you could erase your brain He wanted to erase the... Sounds like my life. (laughs) He wanted to erase the memory of his girlfriend. Yeah. And... It's not ringing a bell. Yeah, I know. It's like, it was not a great movie. I don't even think I actually watched it. The thing about Hollywood is I don't have to watch most movies. I watch the trailer and I've got the whole movie. I can tell you what happens. Same. But um, I believe... the same way. (laughs) Right. No, I don't need to pay money to go see that. I I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I think, so imagine how vast just our galaxy is, even though energetically, like it's all, it's, it's only our concept of size. And then how many galaxies are there? And then like out and out and out and out and out. And I can't even make my hands big enough for the screen. Right. So, and how many infinite, because our brains can't wrap our rounds around, our minds around that big a number stars, planets, suns, that's how many spiritual epiphanies you can have. I am not prepared for that, Heather. (laughs) You don't have to do it all in one lifetime. (laughs) I think I did most of it between 2015 and 2022. (laughs) Right? So yeah, they keep coming. Like it's like practice. Think of it as practice. Listen, my next book, like I wrote a first one already, which I haven't, but my next book, because I do, I am writing one, is um, going to be something like it's a practice. Like I've been saying that so much lately. It also gives me a little bit of grace, you know. Like if I if I say I'm going to do X every day, and I don't do it that great one day, I just remind myself that you're practicing. You're just, right. It's just a practice. 
Yeah, it's not to beat yourself up. It's not to, um, you know, give yourself a hard time. Right. It's like, um, what's that guy, James Clear, the Atomic Habits guy? It's like, do little things every day. So I try to, like, well, I do meditate every day um, now that I don't have 7.30 a.m. meetings on Wednesdays. <laughs> but, uh, and, I, and I'm very much like, no, it's, it's just a habit. Like, it's my habit now, and I just do it. But yep, there's some days that I only have five minutes, so so I only do five minutes, mm-hmm. or yep. something will happen. Like if I'm sick, obviously it's going to be a little harder for me to sit quietly, but I'll do my best. Um, but it's little things build into bigger things, and if you don't do it, that doesn't mean oh, why even bother? I failed already. It's like, that's oh. how I lived my life before that, before now, you know, I think it's, that's how a lot of people do. Yeah. That. I can't do it the way that I envision it and my expectations of it, then I'm going to stop. Like, what's the point? And, and it's, then that's so bad. And what if your expectation isn't even as big as it could be? So sometimes I think um, people have this idea of this is how this is going to work. And the their blinders are on for that particular thing to the point where it's not working it's not working it's not working but they can't see this like beautiful thing right here it's like if they just turned a little bit it's like whoa look at that i could do that instead or you apply for 50 jobs and then you get the one that you think you didn't even want and you get it and you're there and it's like this is the most amazing job i've ever had in my life and all of those 50 jobs didn't work out because they weren't supposed to. Right. And meanwhile, you're stuck in that. Why am I not being hired for this? Why do they think I'm not qualified enough for, for this? What? I mean, I can say this because this literally just happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I have a lot of experience and skills. Why are they not even calling me for an interview? You know, so, yeah, we, we tend to think things are going to happen a certain way. We want them, and this is how we think they're going to happen. And sometimes those things do happen, but the, how you get there is completely different. Right. How you get to the place. And then when you stop for a moment, and that awareness that we talked about earlier is there, and you look back, and you're like, wow, this is exactly what I was hoping for. This was right. exactly what I wanted. Or even I didn't better. Get the way that I thought I was going to get there. And sometimes it's better because you are like, you're limited by what you can imagine. And the, the, if you want to call it the universe, is not limited by what you can imagine. It's mm-hmm. Maybe it's imagining something even more massive. Mm-hmm. And it may take you walking across the hot coals to get there. Yep. As my metaphor for crap. like. Well, I appreciate you saying that because I feel like walking across hot coals is so much more positive than crap. Because all of the stuff that I went through, I don't feel like is crap. It was just a word to, you know, describe how it felt. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm so grateful because here I am right now, you know, and right. I kind of like where I am right now. So, well, and sometimes you can't see until you get through it to the other side. Yeah. To to have that look back. I remember when my landlord gave me, was it, two, I think two months, three months, closed my yoga studio and my apartment was attached to it and kicked me out of my apartment. Yes. I remember talking to you about yeah. that. Yeah. And I had that, oh my God, what what am I gonna do? My business is closed, I have no home. Like yeah. th- there was that holy crap. But as much as I was upset, luckily my husband is the most calm man on the planet. He just went, Let's just find somewhere new to live. Ooh. And I said, Okay. <laughs> and we found one in three days. And that's where I am now. And it's and I love it. And like I never would have moved because I was settled. I was in a I wasn't in a rut, but kind of a rut, you know, I was in a routine. Well, you know what I find interesting about that statement that you said about your husband, the most calm person that you know, and said, let's just find a new place to move. Um, It's almost as if his calm helped you to become less, you know, reactive and upset. And because he was calm about it, and perhaps you became more calm about it, it happened. It does ha- it you know, happen. There's no, there's no resistance. If you no. had all of that resistance, uh, it probably would have taken you longer to find a place. And if he was freaking out too, oh my God. Oh, geez, that would have been awful. <laughs> and by the way, he meditates every day as well. <laughs> Good for him. Right? Yeah. I, I meditate every morning. He meditates every night. I always say I can't meditate at night. I fall asleep. 
I shoot for four o'clock in the morning first when I when I wake up, and then I try to I shoot for like four thirty too. In the morning, um, in the morning when I wake up, it's about five forty five. But in the afternoon, I shoot for after like four thirty. Okay. I get up at all weird hours of the morning. I've been having weird dreams lately. I do that every night. Um, I ask my subconscious. This is something I got from another podcast. I ask my subconscious before I go to sleep. Usually I ask it a specific question. It doesn't always answer me in a way I can understand. But, but it, it answers gives, you and then you it, have to figure it out, right? Then I have to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but uh, just one moment to flip back to the, your imagination isn't big enough. Um, when, we, when we have a vision of our goal, still have a vision of your goal, but leave, this is one of my favorite quotes from the one how. of the coaches I listen to, how. leave margin for magic. Oh, I like that a lot because right? there always is going to be something that you don't expect. And if you leave margin for magic, it almost leaves that idea that, oh, here's the magic. Like it, it's, it puts a positive spin on it yeah. instead of, you know, in that negative space where how come this isn't happening? How like, come it's not working? Happening. How come it's not working? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And we were talking. So I had this idea about Reiki. So Reiki, because we talked about the chakras right before we came on. About, oh, probably right before we came on, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was right before we came on about emotions affecting yeah. all of your parts. Yeah. So I also read the emotion code and I also took this body testing class and I'm certified in that as well. Um, so I use all of that in Reiki when I'm working on someone to determine if there is an emotion because emotions have energy. So when you're working with energy, you're also working with potentially with emotions that might be trapped in energy system in the energy system of the body. So Reiki, when I balance um, clients during a Reiki session, I also inquire as to energetically inquire as to whether or not there is an emotion trap that I can release today. When did they hold on to that, you know, grab onto that emotion? Where is it? Um, in which chakra can Reiki release it? Should we try tapping? And these are questions that I ask and um, and tapping, um, an affirmation, Reiki. I go through my whole, all the things that I know. And then if in fact it, it will be released with Reiki, then I work on that during the session. If it's an affirmation or oils, um, like aromatherapy, then I'll make a little roller and send them on their way. Um, but those are the little things that I do. So I do work with emotions and how they are trapped in the energy system of the body and to try to figure out the origin of it and if we can release it. And that's what I do. And you don't need to know the story, right? No. It's like, because I remember I, I was talking to a woman, do you know Cora Naylor? She, no, I think so. she does, mm, she's in Western Canada. Yes. She does the emotion code. And yeah. um, she was talking about how, you know, you can identify the emotion without having to know, like relive the story of what it was and release yeah. it, which is. No, and oftentimes an emotion is not yours that you took on. It's like a parent's right. emotion that you took on at age five. You know, like it's just something that has attached to you and you took it on as yours. Um, I so always no, picture the little the story. I always picture the little bubbles. Yeah. Bloop, 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 bloop. Popping. Mine are like daggers. They're like, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Mine are like, like a fishing uh, hook that has that other hook that you can't. Oh, the barb? Yeah. <laughs> what do you tear on when you bring it out? But no. You've been doing yoga for 20 years. I haven't been. So that's why mine looks so violent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mine are just bubbles. I call yeah. them emotion bubbles. Just it's interesting. Right. I yeah. call, I started calling them emotion bubbles when I started teaching Tai Chi. It wasn't even when I met Cora. Um, I love that. Because I would be teaching Tai Chi and then I'd be like, whoa, I, I feel like I'm going to cry. Everyone just keep moving. La, 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 la. Like I'm teaching. <laughs> and it was, I called it emotion bubbles. Like something That's perfect. is. perfect. That happens to me during a Reiki session sometimes. I can feel that emotion of, of if I'm at someone's heart center, which is in the middle of their chest. Um, and, it, and it's heavy feeling. Uh, sometimes I get really emotional. And I don't know if I'm releasing for them or if I'm just experiencing what they're feeling. Uh, but I let them know, obviously, you know, I'm feeling heaviness and it's very emotional. And a lot of times they'll share why they think right. that's happening. Um, so it's really, it's such a, it's, Reiki is amazing. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's amazing. 
It is amazing. Yeah. And um, I think it's like it's a super powerful and gentle, powerful and gentle way of treating, right? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. Do you do um, online as well as live in person? I haven't done Reiki healing online, and I also oh. have not done any classes online to attune. I am such an, a hands-on. I'm a hands-on Reiki person. I I tend to put my hands on in appropriate places, um, but I don't hover a lot. Hover. I, my friend Mary Allison, who gives me Reiki, um, learned completely different. And she doesn't do any hands on anything. She just is all over the place and just around me. And I um, I haven't explored online virtual kind of things. I do some online offerings as far as meditation classes. I do have some workshops that I've done online through Zoom during the pandemic, which I would love to do again. Um, but I just don't have anything right now for Reiki other than I send distant healing sometimes. And I do have a group of students that I've attuned and certified and we have a group on facebook that we send distant healing to so i'll send a name or initials and ask them all to send healing and they do so oh that's nice but no i haven't done any classes or healing online i've done angel card reading online you um, do have stuff online it's just not the reiki yeah you and i don't i don't really advertise it but i absolutely can do a lot of it virtually Right. I know um, I talked last year, over a year ago, to a Reiki teacher who was starting to train people online because we couldn't meet in person. Yeah. So maybe it was two years ago. Let's talk about time again, elastic. Doesn't and matter. <laughs> she, she said, you know, she was hesitant to train people and mm -hmm. attune people online, but she said, but it's energy. So exactly. She found that it was actually, a, she actually did find it effective. I was like, that's, a, you know, that's wonderful because I, I question my ability to do that. And that really just comes from my confidence. Your 3d, um, confident your, th your visualization ability. of the 3d world, right? Yeah. If so we, I have a hard time like, okay, you're over there and I'm going to attune you. I, I just, I don't know. And you're right. Maybe it's just, maybe it's a limitation in my mind. Um, we do get caught up in the 3D world because that's I where am. we live, yeah, right? I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and that's the same coach who has the margin for magic. He talks about the 3D a lot. He said, and interestingly, he's a coach who teaches people how to have online digital courses. Like he's really good, but he also lives in the woo. And he's like, you're stuck in your 3D world of what your expectations are. Let's move outside the 3D. Yeah. And I've been stuck in my 3D world. For a while, I work my way out of it, and then I go home and I work my way back into it. I, it's I, I don't even know if that's possible, but I'll tell you, after a day of teaching Reiki or a day where I have three, I usually don't take more than three people in a day, back-to-back um, -back sessions, I'll go home, and the first thing I want to do is have a hamburger and a beer. And I'm like, no, Liz, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, I always feel like I'm way up here energetically. When I'm working, maybe you just need a couple of crystals or something. Yeah, maybe like, I can go for a walk. <laughs> like put your feet in the dirt or something. Yeah, maybe I should just do yoga for real yoga. Whoa. Like not just Shavasana. <laughs> right? Instead, I'm like burger, beer. What do you got? Let's go. You know, something um, heavy. Those are very right heavy. Down. It brings me right down. And right? I'm trying to get away from that. Once I realized the pattern, it took me a few years. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's I'm a okay. learner. So once I realized the pattern of teaching, Reiki, it was usually a teaching Reiki day because that's ours. It's right. all day. Yeah. Um, and once I realized that that's when I was really doing it. Also, I never ate before I came in for a class. And I always felt like, and it wasn't a choice. I just wasn't hungry. I wouldn't eat. And I, I think I needed to feel empty inside to be able to send energy. And I know that's probably not accurate. However, I feel like there's some there's some truth to it. I need to feel be empty enough to send that energy. Well, cuz you're the channel, right? Yeah, and so then when I would get home, I would be hungry. Right. That makes sense. But I also would pick the wrong foods right. and alcohol and that's doesn't really go hand in hand with energy healing. No. But it would bring me right back down to earth, that's for sure. I think about yoga because yoga you're supposed to do on an empty stomach as well. Yeah, I Partly usually if, have to actually. 
partly for practical reasons, like all that twisting and hanging upside down, yeah. <laughs> your poor stomach may not yeah. be too, too keen on it. <laughs> but also it is like for letting energy. your energy yeah. move properly. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So cool. Um, where can everyone find you, by the way, Elizabeth? Well, so I have a new website. It's Mainstream Coaching and Wellness. So it's www.mainstreamcoachingandwellness.com. It's a long mouthful. It's going to be in the show notes. Pl plug that somewhere, right? It's, it'll be everywhere. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook of the same name. And um, I really am active there the most. And I have on a podcast, the of course. So you should listen to my podcast. Definitely especially check Heather, it. Especially yeah. Heather's episode. Yeah. Everybody should run over and listen to my episode 100%. <laughs> That's right. Let's see what, let's see what um, episode. That, um, I'll tell you, it's just with Heather Stewart. It was season two. Season two. And I can and give you the episode in, number too. It just will take me a second to figure it out. It was out. in, uh, was it in November? I feel well, like it was in I can November. tell you in two seconds. One, two, episode 48 with Heather Stewart so it came out um maybe December 2nd but um oh maybe it was December but it was if you look if you're looking it's episode 48 season two yay for season two I really enjoyed our time together on that podcast that was fun yeah this was fun too of course <laughs> of course before we go though I always ask everyone do you have final word of wisdom yeah, I do. There's a quote out there. And I'm going to find it. So it's I don't divine download. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, ready? Um, it's something like if you don't listen to your body when it whispers, then you have to listen to it when it screams. Did we talk about this on your podcast? Probably. Okay, so for some reason, that's coming to me. And I'll tell you why. We were so really supposed to talk about emotions and energy and all of that stuff. But when we keep things trapped up in our body like that, emotions, energy, situations, anxiety, shame, guilt, all of that stuff, then it can affect our body physically, not to mention yeah. emotionally and spiritually. So get aware, start listening to your body, um, listen to your thoughts, just become aware. That's it. And and don't wait until your body screams. Um Listen to it when it whispers. Yes. Yes. I always say it's probably what we talked about on your podcast is the body screaming is pain. Right? Or fear. That's, or fear. Because it doesn't know how to speak English. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And all we need to do is quiet our mind for a moment and connect. Right. And uh, It'll tell you. practice daily meditation. And if you don't know how to meditate, Elizabeth, are, they, are there some on your website? So if you don't know how to meditate, my suggestion would be to download that Insight Timer app and I would find you can use the timer. You can search for topics like anxiety, depression, sleep. You can um, do but to buy time. So if you only have five minutes, look for a meditation that's only five minutes long and yeah. you can search for that that way. Um, go on YouTube, find six minute meditation if you can. Um, focus on your breath, connect to your body. Six minutes or more twice a day really is the best. But if you only have six minutes one time a day, then start that with that. Yeah. And don't start with an expectation. Start with curiosity. Yeah. They say right? have a beginner's mind. And I every time I sit down to meditate, I practice like I'm a beginner. So anything that comes up in my mind, I don't beat myself up for it. It is what it is. I'm a beginner. I'm practicing. And that's it. And I always say this is my other piece of advice. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. <sighs> Told you I was long winded. What I say during a lot of my guided meditations with my students is this. It's not about emptying your mind of all of your thoughts. It's about noticing when you have those thoughts, becoming more aware of the thoughts that are coming through the mind. Because once you're aware of those, you're able to say, okay, now can I focus on something else? You're able to put that aside. And that practice during meditation helps you during your non-meditative state when you're living your life, driving home from work, and you're like, oh my God, how did I even get home? I don't know what happened. Like, how did I even get here? So when you notice that you're distracted more and more every day when you're not meditating, you notice when you're having those intrusive thoughts and you can stop them. You can choose what right. to do. Yeah. So that's really all of my. <laughs> that's not all of your wisdom, but that's, that's... all we can fit in. <laughs> right? Oh my God, so much more. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. So much fun again talking to you. <laughs> Same. My friends in podcast land, check out all of the websites, check out the podcasts, share, like, subscribe, tell us what you think, give us some comments, yeah. and have have a day. <laughs> have an awesome day, my friends. Take care. We'll <laughs> see you, you soon. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like, like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help. You can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com. If you want more of this awesome content, you can follow me on Instagram, Heather Stewart Coaching. You can follow me on Facebook, Prosperity Flow Coaching. And I have a personal request. I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts. And if you could give me a review, hopefully a good one. <laughs> if you could share, if you could send this out into the world, I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend.